Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get started. We have a, a little bit larger um, panelist crew on the Dragonfly side today, so I'll go ahead and, and give a brief introduction to everyone that's, that's joining from the Dragonfly team, and then um, we can go ahead and get started. So we have we have Joe, who, who if you've attended previous office hours, you've met or if you've watched any of our workshops, he's a developer advocate here at Dragonfly. We have Roman joining, who's co-founder, CTO, and creator of the Dragonfly project. We have Vlad joining as well, who's an engineer on the Dragonfly team and uh, was kind of the principal working on Dragonfly Search. And he'll be speaking with everyone about that today. And then we have a, a new team member to welcome and introduce Laura, who is who's based in England in the London area, and she is our new head of community. So uh, welcome, Laura. Welcome, everyone. And excited to chat with everyone and show off uh, some of the Dragonfly Search functionality released last week. Um, yeah, let's get into it, Joe, if you want to move forward to the next slide. So this is what we're going to be covering today. We'll give a brief introduction to Dragonfly for those of you who are not familiar with the project. We'll then talk uh, about what Dragonfly Search is, how, you know, the, the Vlad, who's the engineer who worked on it, will give some insight into how it was built. We'll talk about some use cases. We will provide a couple of, of demos um, with some code examples on how you can go about using Dragonfly Search. And then we'll talk a little bit about what the roadmap going forward looks like for this feature. Um, and then at the end, if there's any questions, we'll certainly have time for, for a Q&A. Um, Roman, do you want to go ahead and, and give us just a brief overview of the Dragonfly project for, for those who aren't familiar? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Nick. Um, before that, I'm uh, super excited to be here today. And this time we have a special occasion uh, for having community hours and uh, really kudos to Vlad for making this happen. For those who don't know, Vlad is the lead developer for Dragonfly Search API, and he is here to share some insights with us. So the Dragonfly project hosted on GitHub is a source available, and we frequently release new versions of uh, Dragonfly for both Debian and Fedora Linux distributions. And when I say Fedora, I also include the uh, uh, Red Hat, CentOS, or Amazon Linux, so uh, really um, just any distribution that uh, supports RPM packages. And uh, what's exciting to see is that uh, our Dragonfly community is constantly growing. Uh, in fact, uh, the usage of Dragonfly grew uh, more than two orders of uh, magnitude uh, during this uh, year, and our development community more than doubled. We are now nearing uh, 100 contributors to the project. It's really exciting to see. So what is Dragonfly? Dragonfly is the most performant in memory store out there. It's it fully utilizes modern hardware and achieves millions of uh, queries per second on a single node while still maintaining a uh, sub-millisecond latency uh, during query time. It can operate on a terabyte size workloads. And in many cases, it, it can also show a significant reduction in total memory usage, bringing even more efficiencies to users. Uh, Dragonfly is fully compatible with Redis and MKHD, and we constantly expand its uh, Redis API service. Uh, just a month ago, we talked about our uh, Boolean Q support, and we plan to support more frameworks early next year. This was like a two-minute introduction uh, to our community project, but in parallel, we are also developing our cloud service. Uh, all the performance enhancements that went into Dragonfly also contribute uh, to cost effectiveness of our cloud offering, yielding a significant savings for our customers. Our cloud service includes, of course, 24 seven uh, support, automatic backups, and effortless uh, version upgrades. Awesome, thank uh, you for that, Roman. And, and if you wanna learn more, obviously you can visit the GitHub repo, check out the documentation, download it, and, and try it for free. Um, great, sorry, Roman, you wanna go ahead and, and give us a, an introduction to Dragonfly Search as well? Yeah, uh, as I said, we're constantly expanding our APIs and features, and uh, the Search API is a great example of it. Uh, it has been in alpha since September and was released in beta in our latest version 113. In, uh, by the way, uh, 113 brings a bunch of stability and performance upgrades, despite its uh, unlikely number. Uh, we recommend uh, everyone to use it as a recommended upgrade. Uh, just because of all the stability fixes we uh, put there. Um, search API is uh, compatible with ready search API, and it offers both uh, faceted or structured, uh, structured search, as well as uh, vector search capabilities. There's some of the, the details that Roman was just speaking of as to what, what, Dragon, what is Dragonfly Search. Um, do you wanna provide any more, any more detail here? Is that cover it? Um, 
So traditionally, uh, key value stores uh, or noise scale databases uh, provide efficient data access uh, using primary keys. That's what uh, Dragonfly was designed to do perfectly well. But in order to support queries uh, similar to relational uh, databases uh, based on, uh, let's say, object attributes, we must have a way to search using secondary indices. With Dragonfly search, you can now build secondary indices using the ft create command and execute search queries using the ft search command. So I'm going to jump in here a little bit. Uh, so Roman, for uh, users, I have a question here for from the community. So for users that are already with familiar with Ready Search, uh, how can they transition to using Dragonfly search? Are the commands the same? Um, yeah, uh, the commands are the same, but uh, we currently focus uh, mostly on structured search and vector search capabilities, uh, meaning uh, the full text search capabilities of this API are not implemented yet. Uh, so uh, if uh, a user, potential user, uh, uses uh, queries with formal terms or uh, filters using tags, uh, basically a structured search, uh, search query, a uh, Dragonfly search can definitely be used. Uh, and it's much more efficient than uh, other open source alternatives uh, out there. That's very nice. Um, another one here is that uh, say if uh, some users are already using Dragonfly and want to utilize structured search and vector search capabilities, do they just need to upgrade to version 113? Is that uh, what they need to do? Yeah, yeah, uh, that's the only thing they need to do, and they have this API. Yeah. Awesome. Thank, thanks for that, Roman. I think the the next thing we're going to cover is is how this this functionality and feature was built. So we'll we'll kind of move to Vlad, the engineer who led this effort, um, to to dig into this a bit more. Sure. So I think there are some interesting details to share. As you might have seen from our page, Dragonfly is built around a shared nothing architecture, which means that um, all the data is sharded between threads and every thread stores only its uh, separate key set and builds separate index in it. So once you query Dragonfly, the query string arrives at Dragonfly and first what it does, it parses the query and builds a so-called query execution tree. This query execution tree um, has also some basic optimizations that are applied to it. And once the tree is built, it is sent to all the threads. And each thread, it has a separate index that kind of knows about all the values that are stored inside this thread. And it executes the query tree efficiently. And once all the threads have finished processing the query, they collect, they send the results to a single collector, which aggregates all of them. And if, for example, the query was more sophisticated and used vector search, or for example, needed to sort the output, the collector has also to do some additional operations to restore the original order. And once it's done, the result set is ready and the results can be sent back to the client. And an interesting direction we are currently working on is probabilistically uh, reducing the number of work every thread has to do to get this final result, which means that we can effectively parallelize query execution without doing any redundant work. And of course, uh, some main use cases uh, we can highlight for Dragonfly search. So the first and most obvious for structured and faceted search would be any kinds of websites that uh, provide users the option to filter and query for data. So for example, any kinds of online shops or listing websites. Uh, example we found would be an online real estate listing website where users can filter uh, the homes and flats by the price, by the location, and by the by the features, like if they have a balcony or how many bedrooms they have. And all of this can be easily made with Dragonfly structured search, where the user's preferences are just translated into a query and the query is sufficiently executed into Dragonfly and returns all the results. Social media platforms that also have the option to filter uh, the vast number of content that is there by text. So structured search supports not only filtering by specific values, but also by text, which can be any strings and by having all the posts on the social media platform indexed with a text, you can give the users an option to easily find all the posts that they're interested in. And the last and maybe most um, hot topic in this year would be using vector search together with knowledge database. So for example, um, a simple example would be storing 
some kind of articles, for example, from Wikipedia, but a more sophistic sophisticated example would be storing products. And vector search can be used to find uh, relevant options. For example, you can find, and what, what we'll look on later, you can find relevant articles from Wikipedia by the description. Or for um, online shops, you can, uh, knowing the preference of the user, suggest them similar products. So all in all, it has many use cases and sometimes can be a crucial feature for implementing correct search. Great, I think we'll jump into uh, a couple of, of demos showing off both structured search and vector search. So Vlad, do you mind walking us through those? Sure. So um, structured search can of course be used with raw Redis commands as shown in our blog post, but the already existing ecosystem for Redis search has some nice libraries. One of them is the Redis um, object library set that has libraries for Python, JavaScript, and C-sharp. And we're using the JavaScript library to simplify building an issue tracker. So as you can see on the left, there is an example of an issue object. It is an object that describes the kind of information that we want to store. We want to store issues. So they have an author, a title, the time they were created on, some text, and a list of comments. So it, it is very similar to GitHub, for example. And we have on the right, a schema. A schema that describes how the issues should be indexed. So we see that they mirror all the paths from the issue object and the issues themselves are stored in Dragonfly as JSON objects. We can also already see some strong sites of JSON path support. So JSON path is a specification that allows us to extract fields from JSON values. And you can see, for example, the number of comments and the last update fields. Those are values which are not actually stored inside Dragonfly but are computed on the fly when the document is indexed. And this will allow us later to sort, for example, the issues by the number of comments without actually storing this value. And the same applies for the last update field. We might want to fetch the most recent um, issues with most recently commented, um, with, with the most recent comments and the JSON path syntax easily allows for that. And if we switch to the next slide, we will see how we can use the provided uh, query builder from the Redis object mapper library. And it allows us to build a query without actually needing, without actually knowing the full syntax, how queries are built. So uh, he will, for example, look for issues that were uh, made by Alice and they are tagged as important. And we want to get the most recent ones. And we use very, in a, in a very simple manner, we use the query builder to build this query and then execute it. We have a detailed example in our search blog post where we have all the code listed and it can be easily reproduced and viewed with comments. So we have one more example prepared, um, vector search. Uh, so for vector search, we are using the uh, Redis library and the OpenAI library. The OpenAI library will allow us to turn our content, mainly our text, into embeddings. Embeddings are so-called vectors which are produced by um, machine, uh, by neural networks and those all kinds of big language models that um, denote how, what the content actually means. And those vectors, the embeddings can then be used to compare how similar objects are. So for example, we can turn text into a vector and then by comparing the vectors, we will have information about how similar the original text is. So what we will do if we um, execute the second cell, we will show the preloaded information. We have a data set of Wikipedia articles and they have a URL, a title and the text. And what we'll see is they are already stored together with the embeddings. So the vector for the title and the content they symbolize the meaning as understood by OpenAI's models. So on the next step, we start Dragonfly. And once Dragonfly is running, we will proceed with creating our index. Uh, it's a very simple specification. We list all our fields and they mirror the structure that we have seen. So a title field, a real field, and a text field. And the last two fields are special vector fields. For the vector fields, we have to specify some more info, mainly what data type they use. 
uh, we currently support only eight byte floats, what dimensions the vector have. So all vectors should be of the same dimension so they can be compared. The distance metrics, so the commonly used are the Euclidean distance L2 and cosine similarity, which we both support and how many vectors we'll have. So we declare those fields, so the vectors are indexed as well. And we proceed with creating our index. And let's execute the next cell to verify the next cell to verify that our index actually exists. So it prints us our, our index definition, and it shows that all the fields that we have declared, they are indeed understood by Dragonfly, and it has built the index specification. And we'll see that currently it doesn't have any documents. But in the next step, we'll load all the documents into Dragonfly. So all the documents, they are stored as simple hashes with the hash data type. And we'll see that it quickly loaded all the documents. There's one important detail that the vectors itself, they are stored as in, in the raw binary formats. So, format. so we have to pre-process them a little by turning the Python array presentation into, into bytes. So let's make sure that our index has all the documents. So it returns 25,000. It's the documents we have. And the last part and the main part is actually querying this index. So we have a special function that takes um, the user query as its input. And the user query is a string. It is a description of what art, what kinds of articles the user might be searching for in our knowledge database with all the Wikipedia articles. And we take the string and send it to the OpenAI API. And what it does, it returns us a vector, the so-called embedding, and which symbolizes what uh, the model thinks the value of this, the, the real meaning of this query string is. Then we build our query. So this is the a little bit confusing syntax. Um, we select all the documents and apply the nearest neighbor search to them. We search the vectors which are closest to our target vector, which we have just gotten from our OpenAI API. Um, the next step, we include this embedding vector into the parameters and ask Dragonfly to return only the title and the vector score. And finally, we execute a query and print all the results. So in the next part, we will actually show uh, an example. So if we don't know how to phrase ourselves correctly, searching for brave man, which we see that Dragonfly uh, found the nearest vectors and the meaning was understood correctly. So we see that the Polo program is the first one, the closest by the meaning. And Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, two famous astronauts that landed on the moon. And we'll see that it's also, it ha also has um, results connected. With, so NASA, okay, the space and space exploration. So th this was a short demo on how to use vector search. We also have an example in our blog post, how to set it up and what the nuances of using vector search with Dragonfly are. Very cool. Thanks for walking us through that, Vlad. And, and, and real quick, before we before we get into the future roadmap, I want to remind everyone, as you're trying out Dragonfly Search, if you have any questions, any feedback, please feel free to hop into our Discord channel. Our, our engineers, including Vlad, are in there and would love to hear what you're building, answer your questions, and, and you know take your feedback into account as we continue to, to work on this functionality. Which brings us to to the next topic, uh, which is Dragonfly Search Roadmap. What are, Roman, can you walk us through some of the things we, we have planned for the future? Yeah, so uh, a year ago, we actually hadn't, uh, didn't plan to build a, a Dragonfly Search API. And we heard a feedback from our community uh, and heard it again and again. And, uh, and we changed our plans and actually put it into... Uh, uh, our roadmap uh, edit and and we did it multiple times uh, during the development of the project so my point is that uh, our roadmap is uh, very much affected by a uh, community requests we uh, would like to see how community use this api so that we understand what kind of parts we need to optimize and extend and uh, improve and polish etc um uh, having said that uh, i think um uh, like the, the most obvious thing that they will probably need to fix uh, soon is uh, to add uh, the aggregate command that is uh, currently missing. It is possible to build today workarounds and uh, like using law scripts and uh, compute the 
the the aggregations using uh, like the full text uh, FT search comment, but uh, I mean it, it will be much easier if we just provide this comment, and uh, probably that's what we're gonna uh, build uh, next quarter. Um, and uh, we have uh, more ideas of uh, how we can extend uh, this API and improve uh, uh, vector search capabilities, but really. Uh, we would love to hear uh, our users feedback about this. Joe, you want to walk us through kind of how folks can get started and then um, also if there's any questions from the community, we can go through those as well. Yes, for sure. So we have all the links here. Uh, it might be hard to follow, you know, uh, from the slides, but uh, we're going to share the links in the in the Q&A chat as well. Uh, we have documentation, the new updated documentation pages uh, over here. And you know you can always get started with Dragonfly uh, in no time, uh, locally, both locally, or if maybe you want to install, uh, you know, the binary Docker Kubernetes uh, to your server. We also have our blog post over here, and uh, yeah, um, our Discord server. Uh, yeah, we, it's uh, it's uh, the link is a little bit hard to follow, but uh, maybe go to the homepage very soon, and you can join the Discord server if you want to, uh, you know, connect with the community and the team. Uh, yeah, we also have a um, the first ever Dragonfly uh, survey link, which I believe Flora has already shared in the in the QA. So if uh, if you're interested, please um, please do fill out the survey survey, and we're offering uh, prizes in there. So it's going to be very helpful uh, for us. Yeah. So basically, if you're already familiar, um, uh, our documentations are over here, and um, yeah, the command recently updated search commands, they are over here. And our blog post as well, we have the uh, search blog uh, over here. Yeah, and of course, if you wanna join the Discord uh, channel, uh, our social links are on our homepage as well. Great, Joe, I believe there's uh, one question from from someone in the audience, which is, what is the performance of Dragonfly vector search? Um, Roman, do you want to take that and give, give just give a little detail on on the performance of Dragonfly search? I think it's better that uh, Vlad will answer this. Uh, he was sure uh, working with this. So there are two main approaches to vector search. One is the brute force approach, which has less memory consumption, but obviously doesn't work for large data sets. And there is the HNSV, Hierarchical Navigatable Small World approach, which is like a, a new algorithm that is commonly used by many vector stores. And we support both of them. We, for HNSV, use a popular library, C++, which is also an, an adaptation of it is also used by Redis Search. So performance for both brute force and HNSV search should be comparable, but bear in mind that there are some um, parameters which currently cannot be configured in Dragonfly. So if you want more precision, or if you want have if you want to have um, more parameters for constructing HNSV, then this is sadly currently not yet possible. But we are planning on adding those. So in general, to cap up, it should be comparable to Redis Search. We have uh, one more here saying, uh, is uh, is Dragonfly Search like a module on top of Dragonfly? Yeah. I think I can answer that, but I will let uh, Roman or Vlad to, no. to answer that as well. Go ahead, uh, Joe. Why okay. You... Well, uh, it's not. So like JSON, uh, the JSON commands and search commands uh, for Redis, like they're supported as modules, so you need to uh, load the module into your uh, instance. But for Dragonfly, the, these commands are supported natively. So yeah, it's a whole thing. So you don't have to do uh, additional. The only thing you need to do is to make sure that you have uh, 113. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And, and in general, our philosophy is to add everything into the uh, our project. So any feature, any enhancement, uh, any API extension, everything will go directly to the uh, project. We don't have any separation and uh, differentiation. Uh, and so we don't need uh, models uh, for that. Uh, we just support any feature inside uh, a Dragonfly core. Cool, let's see if there are uh, other questions. Uh, yeah, we have another one. Uh, yeah, this comes up uh, every time. Uh, I think we're always happy to answer about uh, questions on, on licensing. Uh, does it have the same license? I suppose the question is, uh, does search or JSON command in Dragonfly 
do they have the same license uh, of the Dragonfly project, right? I believe that's uh, that's what the question means. Yeah, since uh, everything is uh, under the same project, uh, all our code is uh, covered by the same license. It's a, a business source license, uh, meaning that everyone can use it free, uh, uh, install it on on-prem, in the cloud, whatever, uh, without any limitations. Uh, the only limitation that exists to this license that the uh, companies can't create a managed service uh, using or provide professional services using uh, uh, our project, Dragonfly project. Cool, sounds good. Thank you, Roman. Uh, we have another one. We will take this one as well. So maybe I can I can do this. The question is like how uh, complete is the is the in terms of the features of the commands, right? So yeah, as we mentioned in the presentation, we currently support uh, structure search on um, terms, text, and text and vector search, right? So basically, uh, if you if you look at our uh, documentation. Uh, in comparison with uh, maybe ready search, we have a few more uh, commands missing, but I would say that the core, like the foundation is over here already, right? Like the for the create command, which is what you will use to to do the indexing. And the search command is the what you're gonna use for the actual query, right? And within here, this is uh, these are these are super accurate. We currently support uh, these commands, these command options, uh, you know, as explained. And we also have, as explained down here, and we also have uh, comprehensive examples over here as well. So yeah, we can search for like, you know, ranges. Uh, this is like by tag, right? And this is also uh, by attribute. So yeah, give it a shot. And uh, I really, I really enjoy uh, using this feature. Oh, so let's see. Um, yeah, I think it's slowing down. We don't have uh, more questions coming in for today. Um, yeah, maybe back to Nick or Roman. Maybe that's uh, that's all we have for today. Great. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for for attending. Um, thanks for your interest in Dragonfly Search. Looking forward to hearing feedback and and what what everyone builds with it. Um, and yeah, and and we'll we'll see you at the next uh, office hours, which will be in the new year. So take care, everyone, and yeah, have a have a good interior. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Bye. guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.